Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State Attack. Thanks for being here. Whether you are watching this as a video on YouTube or listening to the new State of Tech podcast, some of these episodes that are more conversational and less about showing actual images and products and stuff like that, I'm going to be putting both on the YouTube channel and on the podcast so that if you would prefer to listen to episodes like this, make sure to go and subscribe to the State of Tech podcast. But digital well-being or screen time, these topics of us utilizing utilizing our devices less and tracking our activity on them has become a major talking point of overall health and whatnot in the past few years now. And so I wanted to talk about whether or not like these are actually helping us and how to utilize them in this talk today. So let's talk about what they are first, screen time or digital well-being. They are a tracker within your device that shows you your usage based on different categories, such as uh, things that are using in your phone, of course, whether it's screen on time or specific applications, the amount of time that we're spending in these different areas utilizing our devices in different ways. On an Apple device, it's called screen time, and on an Android device, it's called digital well-being for the most part. Some Android devices give it its own name, but that is what it is. So is it useful? Now, I think it's useful, but we have a lot of tools in our lives that we don't use. And so whether or not they're useful is dependent on whether or not you're actually going to use it. It is useful, but unless you use the tool to help cut down your screen time, it's just a cool graph that might make you feel bad about how much time you spend on your device. So utilizing it, it means that you actually have to make some change in the way that you use your devices if you're trying to cut back. Otherwise, simply just looking at it from time to time and realizing that you spent eight hours yesterday on Instagram is just going to make you feel bad, and we definitely don't want that to happen. So you want to utilize the tools to help you cut back on the apps that you spend too much time using. Of course, we utilize our screens for a lot of different things. We check our email, we do research, we make phone calls, text messages, all that stuff. But there are definitely apps that we probably spend too much time in. I know for me, I watch too many YouTube videos, and sometimes I scroll Instagram for a bit too long. So I like to limit that, and tools like this make it easy for me to see just how much time I allowed to spend on those things that I want to cut back on. Uh, so it can also help prevent procrastination if you schedule time that certain apps can't be used. This is where this feature really becomes pretty cool. You can actually tell your phone not to let you use apps during specific times of the day. So if there is time of the day when you need to be working or studying or doing anything else but scrolling specific apps, you can actually shut that down by using the digital well-being or the screen time app, which is pretty cool. So here's how it works. It tracks your usage and gives you insight into how you're using your phone and for how long, which is great. That's kind of your baseline information there. It gives you total screen time. It also breaks apps into categories like social media, which is a good one to track because we can easily spend too much time in social media. So it breaks it up into app categories. And then of course, the amount of time that you spend in each app. And so even in those app categories, there may be some crossover. Like under social media, you might have Facebook and Instagram Instagram, but you also have LinkedIn. And when you're on LinkedIn trying to connect with other business professionals or whatnot, you know, that can also count towards your social media time. So you also want to be able to track that stuff on a per app basis. And it offers you tools to help you use your device less or more wisely, which is pretty cool. We talked about one of those already. So how do you use it? We have to make it a simple process to use these tools so I am as distraction-free as possible without shutting my phone off completely. It allows me to still get my phone calls and still get my uh, text message notifications, but all other notifications are muted and all apps that I don't want to give into are basically locked until I physically unlock it. Of course, I can unlock it and undo all of those things, but if I set my phone down and it isn't, you know, the screen isn't coming on, there aren't reminders, there aren't things that are popping up that typically would get me to jump into an app that I want to avoid, the process is uh, definitely much easier um, and it's much easier to avoid giving into those things. 
I also use it to manage my kids' devices, so they are basically deactivated except for the time that my wife and I want to allow them to use their devices. If it was up to my kids, they would probably use their devices all the time, so we make sure to schedule time that they can use their devices and then also schedule limitations around that. In utilizing these tools, it makes it much easier because the device is either deactivated or it's only activated for a certain amount of time, and if I get distracted or my wife does and we're working on something else, we we don't end up accidentally giving our kids double or triple the amount of time that they should have had on their technology. So some closing thoughts, you actually have to want to cut back on your usage. Of course, we have lots of tools in our devices that give us information, and unless we utilize that information and make some change in our own lives, it's not really gonna make a bit of a difference. Our phones track our steps, but you're not actually gonna lose any weight until you increase your activity. So you know what you are tracked, but you have to actually increase the activity to actually lose the weight or become more active or whatever it is that your goal is. And that is the same thing with these digital well-being uh, screen time top type of apps. If you want to cut back on your usage, you have to utilize them in a way and take the steps necessary to actually cut back. With that said, it's not magic. You have to put in the work, which means activating them, utilizing them, and tracking yourself and checking in and making sure that you are actually cutting back or giving yourself a little bit of a reprimand if you don't cut back and making sure that you are working towards limiting your screen time activity. Self-awareness is a huge part of that. Of course, if you are not aware of your activity in the first place, you're not going to realize that you have a problem. Uh, you're just going to see the results of overusing your devices in your own life. Now, I definitely track a lot of my life utilizing Notion. I've talked about that a lot on my personal YouTube channel and how I use the app Notion to track my activity and usage in the different things that I'm trying to track and pay attention to in my life. So definitely check out those videos if you are interested. But that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for being here, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube. Thanks for being here. Click that subscribe button on YouTube or the podcast or both so you can be notified when we put out new content. Of course, not everything that's on the YouTube channel will be on the podcast. And occasionally we'll do some podcast specific things that are more better suited for audio only format. So that's gonna do it for today. Thanks again for being here. Use that screen wisely and we'll see you back in the next one.